No Man of God, directed by Amber Seeley, is the latest in a long line of Ted Bundy films, far too many of which have exploited the serial killer's mystique by elevating him to a pedestal. Her film tries to avoid this by focusing on the days when Bundy was basically attempting to talk his way out of the electric chair rather than his crimes or attention getting trial, but she still gives the myth of Bundy so much attention that everything else fades into the background. As a result, it's a bit of a cop-out to say that Luke Kirby's Bundy's performance is one of the best ever put on film. Mesmerizing he's a nuanced, but it's a cop-out nonetheless. But it turns No Man of God into yet another project that relies too heavily on not just the Bundy mythology, but also the idea that he could have lived next door to anyone in America, or even an FBI profiler, if he had made a few different choices. I'm not here to discuss Ted Bundy's odd business of books, plays, and movies. Rather, I'm here to say that, No Man of God, adds nothing to the Bundy canon other than a fantastic lead performance. Kit Lesser's script is based on FBI agent Bill Hagmeyer's Elijah Wood, recollections and recordings of Ted Bundy's, Luke Kirby, interactions with the young G legendary man from 1984 to 1989. In the 1980s, the idea of profiling some of the world's most vile sociopaths to help the FBI catch them in the future was advocated. The man who inspired Netflix's Mindhunter, John Douglas, is mentioned in No Man of God, and real-life talks between Hagmeyer and Bundy are claimed to have inspired Thomas Harris, the author of Manhunter and the Silence of the Lambs. Hagmeyer is played by Wood as a wide-eyed but confident young agent who is captivated by Bundy but yet unafraid of him and, more crucially, in no rush to dominate him. Agents would come to talk to Bundy and try to alpha male him, but Hagmeyer sought to meet him on his level, hoping that a new approach would lead to something, anything, regarding the missing victim so that the families could have closure. The writing by Seeley and Lesser also leans too much on the darker side, implying that Hagmeyer could have been Bundy had he made a few different life choices, or vice versa. The premise that serial killers are more like you and me than we'd like to believe is overused in the serial killer drama genre. Scenes in which Hagmeyer looks at young ladies of the type Bundy would have likely targeted for a little longer than he usually does feel trashy and false, particularly one after one of their darker chats. No Man of God is constantly undermining what works about it with dramatic decisions. Seeley's film is a real two-hander, with two actors confined to a room and permitted to bounce ideas off each other. At its best, it feels like the kind of theater that would be found in a college campus's black box theater. Kirby impresses in this role, capturing the precise balance of charm and terror that fueled Bundy's madness. Seeley also uses an unusual framing technique with him, frequently positioning him directly to the right of the frame, making him appear more aggressive even in normally controlled speech. It produces a sensation of danger despite the fact that there is none. It's all the more heartbreaking when a techno-driven montage of grim imagery, or any other choice, appears to be unnecessary for this film. No Man of God fades into the background in the face of so many other equivalent and superior attempts, and it comes across as cheap. It simply does not have enough to add to the conversation or a strong creative point of view to justify its briefness. <laughs>